köszönjük a terhadást, a meditációról, a következőre tart nekünk a meditációról egy előadást. Köszönjük! Köszönjük! Nagyon sok szabad hely van itt. Gyertek, én voltam közelebb. Nem kell félni, gyertek! Gyertek, én voltam. Jó az. Most próbáld. Most. Oké, so let's start on our second topic today. That is meditation. I think some of you are taking these kind of meditation courses, you are attending meditation classes. So I would like to start asking you, why do you want to take do meditation? For what? Tell me why do you want to do meditation? Good for what? Good for what? Like if somebody asks you why do you eat food, you say I feel hungry, I need to nourish my body, therefore I eat food. But if you ask me why do you eat food, then you can tell me why you eat food, because you eat food, because you eat food. So why do you want to do meditation? So why do you want to do meditation? To nourish your souls. You see, when you do anything, anything in life, you must know why you are doing it. Mikor bármit is tesztek, tudnátok kell, hogy miért teszitek azt. The purpose is very important. A cél az nagyon fontos. And what do you mean by meditation? These, these are two things which we will talk first and then we will go into the details. A másik dolog, hogy mi az, amit a meditáció alatt értünk. Erre a kettőt fogunk beszélni, aztán tovább. Now, I want to ask you another general question. Szeretnék megkérdezni, tehetek egy másik fontos kérdést. What is that you want in life? Mit szeretnétek az életben? What you are looking for in life? Mit kerestek az életben? Can you give me an answer? Tudtok el nekem választ adni? Happiness? This is a very good answer. You see your clarity here. Can anybody Tell me who does not want happiness. Van olyan esetben közöttetek, aki nem szeretne boldogság, boldog lenni? No? Everybody wants happiness. Mindenki szeretne boldogság. Why? Miért? Why do you want happiness? Miért szeretne boldog lenni? You know when Newton saw that apple coming down from the tree, he asked why the apple is coming down and people say he's a fool. The apple will only come down, how will it go up? Newton, amikor látta az almát, leesnek, amikor kérdezte, hogy miért esik az alma. És többé a kvének nézték, majd hiszen az alma mindig leesik. But you know what was the result? He invented the law of gravitation because of that question. De így felismerte a gravitáció törvényszerűségét ettől a kérdéstől. So then we should ask, why do we want happiness? What is the reason? Meg kell kérdezni magunkat, miért akarjuk a boldogságot, mi az okunk? 
It's not that simple. It's a profound reason behind it. And it's a very unique dish. So, it will be a little longer talk than in the morning. I hope you are ready for that. So, the kitchen will host a bit of the reggae, the reggae, and the taste of the drum. You see, the human body, human constitution, has two parts. Testnek az emberi felépítésnek két része van. One part is the physical part. Az egyik a fizikai rész. Which has five components. I will explain them some. Aminek öt összetevője van, öt eleme van, amit pedig később elmagyarázom. And the other part is what we call is atma or jivatma or consciousness. A másik része pedig, amit úgy hívunk, hogy atma vagy jivatma vagy a tudatosság. To explain very briefly, when I, the day I die, how do I die? Amikor meghalok, azon a napon, hogy halok meg? The consciousness goes out of my body. A tudatosság kilép a testben. The physical part becomes useless because it dissolves, it can't stay even for a few hours. A fizikai rész az pedig hasznantalan lesz, mert gyakorlatilag feloldódni később. So there are two ingredients of human body. The consciousness and the physical body. That keep us at the way of no the body in the physical areas is shown to the doshan. Now, I'll come back to physical body later. Physical body is the direction. The physical body is temporary. The physical body is idolatrous. Like we wear clothes. Oh, I mean, because you have to. When they become old and torn, we throw them out. Put on new clothes. Similarly, the soul, the soul takes this body, and then the body becomes weak and old. This body is thrown out, and the soul takes another body. So the body is the host for our soul. Az csak a vendéglátója a léleknek. Each one of us is consciousness. We are not body. Remember this word. Minden ilyen tudatosság vagyunk, nem a test. Ez erre emlékeztetek. We are atma, we are soul, we are consciousness, we are body. Atma vagyunk, lélek vagyunk, tudatosság vagyunk, nem a test vagyunk. And what is the basic nature of atma? És az atmának mi az alap természetem? In Sanskrit, the Atma comes from Paramatma. The, the consciousness comes from the universal consciousness. A Sanskrit Atma, a Paramatma, boy, a tudatosság az univerzális tudatosság az számozik. Like you have water in this bottle. In the one visa panus bag. You take one drop out and you put it in the glass. So the water, the drop comes from this bottle. Vagy csapod a pohárba teszel, akkor a csapod ugye a tudatosságba számozik. Similarly, the atma comes from the universal consciousness. The, the consciousness, individual consciousness, comes from the universal consciousness. And what is the character of universal consciousness? It has been said that it is. There are many characters to describe it. In three words, it has been described very beautifully. Sat Chittanand, Sat Chittanand. Na ilyen sok féleképpen lehet lenni, de három szózom igazán lehet, hogy a Sat Chittanand. The Sat means eternal, which lasts forever, which never depreciates, never is destroyed. Sat azt jelenti, hogy örökké valami, és sosem elpusztítható, sosem szönyik meg. Chitt means Chetna, that is the consciousness, that it is Conscious. It is not like the stable, which is not conscious. It is like me, who is conscious. The chit muta just so it's tudatos. That tudatos. I mean, it's a zastra. I mean, it's a tudatos. I mean, it's an intention tudatos. Anant means happiness or bliss. As anant refers to the boldoshag is adatta. And this is the character of the universal consciousness and our individual consciousness. As a universal is. Our individual consciousness is sat; it's eternal. Body dies, consciousness is eternal, never dies. 
Never be born. Ami egy ilyen tudatosságunk szállt. Tehát amit meg, meghal a testünk, akkor a tudatosságunk nem hal meg, sosem hal meg. It provides consciousness to the body. It is this is this consciousness which we have individual consciousness. It provides consciousness to the entire body. Az egy ilyen tudatosság, az tudatosságból látja a testet. It's called chit chitna. It provides chitna. It provides consciousness to it. Chitna kiért is ez egy tudatosságot ad. And its character is happiness. És a jelezetesség a boldogság. And that is why each one of us wants happiness. És ezért van az, hogy mindenki a boldogságot szeret. And that is why each one of want to be conscious. Ezért mindenki a tudatosság akar lenni. And that is why each one of us want to live no one wants to die. És ezért van az, hogy mindenki a örökkéletben kell és nem akarunk meghalni. This is the character of our being inside. That is why we are looking for happiness. Ez a mi belső lényünk jellegzetesége, karaktere, ezért keresünk örökké a boldogságot. So you understand why we look for happiness? Why the... Most már értitek, hogy... Nobody wants an happiness because... Miért keresünk folyton a boldogságot, és senki nem akar boldogtalálni? This is our basic character. Ez a mi alapvető jellegzetesége. If you put an apple tree here, it will only give you apple, it cannot give you oranges. Hogyha elütetsz egy almafát, az csak almát tud terenni, nem tud más terenni. So the basic character of our being is this, and therefore we cannot, but want happiness. Ez a lény valapető jelezetesség ezért nem tettünk más, mint azt, hogy boldogságot akarunk. So that is one part of the body. Now I was talking about meditation, so I will stick to my subject. A meditáció kezdtem beszélni, ezért maradok a témánál. In order to understand what is meditation, why we need meditation, we must understand the physical constitution of our body. Also, we need to understand that we must understand the physical reality of our body. Do we know what is our body? Do we understand it? We need to understand that we need to understand. You see, when you buy a cell phone, I I go to the market, I get a cell phone. I get a manual with it, eh? with all the functions. So put this. This will, you know, you can put your data in, your addresses in. You can record them. You can. All functions are explained in that manual, isn't it? Amikor veszel elmész a a boltba, elmész a piacba, és veszel egy telefonot, akkor kitalálod azt a telefonot, hogy egy telefon számot címeket beletenni, és a felhasználói képben benne van minden. He bought this video recorder. There's a big manual behind it. How to operate it? How to make it work? Meg lehet ezt a videó kamerát, akkor akkor ott megtanult, hogy hogy kell ezt működtetni. Our body is far more miraculous. It is the most miraculous creation in this world. It must have some manual, isn't it? A mi testünk az a legcsodálatosabb teremtésben a teremtésben, és ezért kéne valami felhasználói kézikönyv legyen igaz. We are the most miraculous creation. Did we ever think of who we are? I think it's it's time that we start thinking who we are. So let me give you a brief analysis of this because this is important to understand what meditation is. So we are the most miraculous creation. As I told you, body has two parts: physical and consciousness. That part is over. Now we are talking physical part. In the moment, I am in a case of a tudatosság és a fizikai, a tudatosság veszett, mert veszélyes a fizikai. The physical part, the biggest part is the body. It's a huge, big body, the largest. You know, we try to make it very beautiful. We use all the cream and powder and good clothes and perfumes to make it beautiful. Tehát ez egy nagy része a testünknek, egy nagy fizikai test, és használni mindenféle krémeket és porokat, hogy szépé tegyünk. And this is in fact very miraculous, because this is the only machine in the world which can create inanimate food into animate and intelligent body parts. És ez érdekes, mert a legcsodálatosabb masina az egész világban, mert az életelen összetevőkből egy élet, élő egészet tud létrehozni. You eat bread, you eat fruit, you eat uh, vegetables, eh? 
you will drink water. Este, what happens? Este kenyada, este zoche, este kuzia, este it turns into blood, into flesh, into bones. How? Vere, vata, zi, husha, vata, it's such a very good mechanism inside. Mm -hmm. We don't recognize it, but isn't it within the world? Can you create this anywhere in the world? Nem ismerjük fel valójában, de máshol tudjuk ezt létrehozni. Put bread, vegetables together and create bread out of it. Can you? Nobody can do that. This is the mechanism. The Buddha is miraculous machine. So this is the first, first layer of the human body. Human constitution rather. As a az emberi felépít még nekünk az az első uh, rétegen. The second uh, layer of the human constitution is the, the senses. A második uh, réteg az a, az érzékszervek. You see we have these small senses, five senses of action and five senses of perception. Van öt cselekvő szervünk és van öt érzékszervünk. And for example, our eyes, our ear, nose, or tongue, taste, or, eh? or they are the second layer of human body. As a, as a body uh, and they are more powerful than the body. When you are not able to see, you are not able to hear, you are not able to eat, your body becomes like vegetable. The miraculous body uh, cannot function properly because so these small senses they control your body. Look at a person in the hospital, poor man cannot see, cannot walk, cannot talk, cannot eat. But what is So this is the second layer of human. Constitution. But these senses are not that powerful as you think they are. These senses are controlled by your mind. You are your ears are right here, but you will not listen to me unless your mind is with me. You may be sitting here, but if your mind is in the shopping mall somewhere looking for camera or looking for refrigerator, it can go there. Sometimes you are sitting in front of TV for one hour, you don't know what happened there. Your eyes are there, you are sitting there, but your mind is not there. Doesn't it happen? So the mind controls your senses. If the mind which sees, if the mind which listens, if the mind which eats, it is the and where is your mind? Can you show me? Can you touch it? Can you hear it? Hmm? Nobody knows where it exists. Still we know it exists, but where? We don't know. So the miraculous body has a great system, but this is controlled by the senses. Senses are controlled by the mind. Hmm? We, will, we will come back to mind because we are talking about meditation, but let me complete this process first. Now, beyond mind, there are two more layers. There are five layers of human body. Physical body. The next layer is intellect. In Sanskrit they call it buddhi. You see, every day your mind mind is vacillating thing, you know, it, it keeps uh, uh, sleeping here and there. For example, you want to go and uh, eat chocolate, your mind says, oh, I must eat chocolate. 
They should intellectual come into play. No, no. You have diabetes. You should not eat sweets. So the power of discretion, the power of reasoning, comes into play and tries to control your mind. Tries to control your mind. Érvelés, és a józan és hogy mind elkezdi akarni kontrollálni az értelmet. Ugyan, but you are very angry with somebody. And just want to kill him. Nagyon mérges vagy, és inkább megölnéd. Then your reasoning comes like, oh, I cannot, it's illegal, I will put behind bars. És ha elkezdesz gondolkodni érvelni, hogy nem tudom megölni, hiszen akkor bezárom. So the reasoning comes, your intellect works. Ez az intellect. Controls your mind. Kontrollálja az értelmet. So this is another layer. Where is your intellect? Can you see it? You can't touch it. Those are beyond senses. These are insensible things. And then the next layer of physical human body, these are physical. And I'll explain you why they are physical. The next layer is the ego. Ego is the most powerful physical part of human body. Az ego a legerősebb fizikai része az emberi lénynek. Ego is the... Somebody comes and tells you good morning and you don't reply, ego is hurt. Hogyha valaki nem köszön neked, jó reggelt, akkor az ego megbántozik. You call somebody on the phone and he doesn't respond, your ego is hurt. Ha valaki fejtsz és nem válaszol neked, akkor megsért. You go to a restaurant and the restaurant guy doesn't give you any attention, your ego is at, I don't want to eat here, I'll go somewhere else. Doesn't it just happen to everyone? Every single second our ego comes into play. It overrules intellect. Reasoning doesn't work there. This whole protocol, you know, the ambassador of India is coming, you must make him receive him properly, he should be seated. This is all designed to satisfy ego. Because if you do not satisfy the ego, the person will be offended. The mayor is coming or the prime minister is coming or so and so is coming. So this ego plays very important role. So these are five elements of the physical part of the body and the everything survives on consciousness. As soon as the consciousness leaves your body, all of them die. The body dies, the senses die, the mind dies, the intellect dies, the ego dies. All of them disappear. They are sustained by consciousness. Consciousness is like foundation of this building. This room and this window and this everything exists because of the foundation. If you remove the foundation, the whole thing, all these windows, rooms, everything will collapse. But we don't recognize for reason, we only recognize the rooms. <laughs> so this is very important to understand the manual of human body. This is not full, it's just a very, very concise description. <laughs> How your body works. You must know, as you know how the telephone works, then you can make it work. Same way, if you know how your body works, then you can make it work. So now let us come to the meditation part. The first essential ingredient of meditation is to understand your own self. A le, az első legfontosabb elem a meditációnak az, hogy megérts saját magad. Just sitting in this puja and your mind is roaming around the world, there's no meditation. Hogyha csak ülsz a meditációs pozitóba és az értelmed megy körbe a világba, az nem meditáció. 
the first most important part is to understand how my body works. In that part, the human senses are very important. The role of human senses. These five senses, they keep dragging you every day. Your sense of sight will say, oh, let me go and see Antarctica, let me go and see New York City, let me go and see India. All the time desiring to see something new. Your sense of hearing would say, oh, this music is not good, I want to hear this, I want to hear that. It keeps driving you. Your sense of taste will say, oh, this restaurant, that restaurant, this food, Japanese food, Indian food. Sense of touch, oh, I must touch very soft things, very beautiful things. This. Sense of a smell all the time, this perfume, that perfume, this is smell. So these five senses, they keep driving you and your mind all the time. Either the mind drives the senses, sometimes the senses drive the mind. There's always a struggle between the two. And that action keeps happening in your body every second of your life. Just sit down quietly in the morning for two minutes and think what I did whole day. You will realize what senses drove you where and how and why. So this process of driving through senses and mind is like the waves in the ocean. These waves keep coming in our mind constantly with association with senses. Constantly they keep coming, coming, going, coming. And that is the biggest problem of uh, human existence. As a somebody did like no problem, I Can you keep your mind still for half a minute? Just think if you can keep this mind on this cell phone for one minute, it would be a great achievement. It's a huge big thing. It will not. It will sleep away and go. You won't even realize where it goes. And that is why meditation is needed. To keep the mind still. Because when there are waves in the ocean, you cannot see the depth. You go to uh, your lake, uh, Balaton Lake. If it is absolutely still, you can see the papers inside the lake. And when there are waves, you can't see anything. This is the problem we face because we are driven by these waves constantly so we cannot see our own self at all. If you want to see yourself inside, then you have to control these waves. You should not be driven by these senses all the time. You should become their master. You should not become their slave. The day, the whole exercise of meditation is to master your senses, your mind.
then the mind will go where you want it to go. Normally you go where your mind wants you to go. Ninety-nine percent of the time you are driven by your mind and senses. We need to reverse that process. And meditation is the root to that. Now how does it work? <coughs> Let me explain you briefly how it works. You see human mind and human breath, they are correlated. <coughs> and this whole world outside which is called in Vedic writings Maya, this has the similar energy or material as our mind. So when you go out in the world, you go to a shopping mall, you are attracted by this thing, that thing. You are attracted by beautiful jewelry, beautiful dress, beautiful cell phone, beautiful TV. Beautiful car, they keep driving you. And then my mind was there. Then you start working for it. I need money because I need to buy a better cell phone, a better car. So they drive you. You are not driving them, they are driving you. So in the meditation, you first learn who you are and the second most important step to control your senses. The senses should be withdrawn from the world and brought inward. If you cannot bring the senses inward, they will keep dragging you outside. You start looking here, inside your heart. Bring all the. There's a very beautiful example in Sanskrit. I can't explain it in English. Kachwa is a animal. What do you call kachwa? It's an animal which takes all its limbs inside. Yeah. It takes all the limbs inside. Huh? Collects inside. The same way we have to bring all our senses The senses are designed to look out. They are not designed to look in. They all look out, all senses. We have to bring them in. This is the first important exercise of And then you concentrate your mind where you want it to remain. If you want to keep your mind on this class, keep it there for one minute, two minutes, three minutes. You will learn the practice that you are able to control the mind. That is the beginning of real meditation. The mind goes where you want it to go. You are not driven by the mind. That is why they give you, tell you in meditation that you sit down quietly in a quiet place, concentrate your mind in on one particular object which you like, whatever object you like. If you like your child, a beautiful child, you just think all the time of your child. If you like Jesus Christ, just think all the time of Jesus Christ. But concentrate your mind there. And this exercise will try and bring your mind slowly, slowly. It's a very difficult exercise. It's not easy exercise because your mind will be again escaping and going away. You have to bring it back. You see, in uh, Arjuna asked Krishna in, in Gita, Bhagavad Gita, 
that mind is so, it's like the air to control mind, to control air, it's something like that. Because breath, the air, breath and mind, they are the same material. So in order to control the air, you create the tube and tire and you look at the power of the air which drives all the vehicles. A small little quantity of air in the vehicle, in the, in the tires. You concentrate it there, how you control it. It tries to escape. There's it tries to escape. But you keep it under control. So you have to do that exercise with yourself. And this is a difficult exercise. Yeah. But it's not impossible. Remember that. With gradual practice, you can do it. But the two things you have to control is to control your senses. Because your senses, if you are roaming around in a shopping mall, if your senses are roaming in a shopping mall and you want to control your mind, that's impossible. So this is what I call is meditation. And once you are able to exercise this control, your energy level will go up so much that you would not realize that you are the same person. You see, in in human body, there is thing called pran. Pran is uh, cosmic energy which which constitutes part of the human body. I was telling you about uh, how this water becomes into blood and the bread becomes into blood. There are five varieties of pranas in your body, in every body. The first prana is called main prana, which is the breath you take in and out. It remains in this part of your body. The second is called Saman Prana. It helps you to take the food inside and then digest the food. It creates seven variety of fires inside your body, this Saman Prana. To convert food into seven different tissues. And the third uh, prana is apan prana, which keeps, uh, which throws out the waste from your body. How you evacuate the urine and stool? That is through that prana. And also it keeps your sexual organs in active position. The fourth prana is Vyan prana, which is in every single cell or particle of your body. It originates into your heart through the breathing process. And it, through 72 million energy channels, it goes into every single particle If you have consciousness here, how? This is because of this prana. Some people don't have consciousness in a small part of the body because the Vyan prana is not reaching their purpose. You will find some people who have, don't have consciousness in some part of the body. And the fifth prana is Udan prana, which takes your soul out of your body at the time of your death. That is the last breath which goes out of your body. 
So this pranic energy so pranic is uh, extremely important for functioning of human body. And this energy could be multiplied many times through the process of meditation. Like in the night when you are sleeping, you have deep sleep for example. All this world disappears, it doesn't exist for you. Even the bed on which you are sleeping doesn't exist. And then you are regenerated because all your energy has been used to revive your body. Imagine if you can't sleep for three, four nights together. What is the state of your body? Hmm? People have to take tablets and go to sleep. Hmm? So that is the importance of pranic energy. And this energy multiplies when your mind is still. If the mind is not roaming around, like in the time of Deep sleep, you are all still. Same way in a state of meditation, you are still. Looking only, for example, that image of Buddha, you are looking only at that image of Buddha. Your mind is not going to Antarctica and US and you know, Russia and China and all. And your energy is conserved. So you have more energy. You have less waves in your body. You become still. And still means you become more powerful. And that is the aim of any meditation. Of course it is not just sitting in that posture and not just that posture. That is not meditation. That is just a display. You can be meditating while walking. You don't allow your mind to go anywhere it wants to go. You don't allow your mind. That's meditation. If you want to sleep, you make your mind sleep and that's meditation. So you should be the master of your mind. That is the aim of meditation. In the ancient Indian traditions, the people who really had that power of meditation, they left their body only when they wanted to leave. Even the death cannot touch them, you see. The death cannot touch them. That is the kind of power that So I think I should end here. But before I end, I would again like to speak one Sanskrit verse. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, sarve vadrani paschantu, maak paschantu bhaag bhavet. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, let everybody be happy in this world. Sarve Santu Niramaya, let everybody be without any illness or disease. Sarve Badrani Bhavi. Badrani means people who are absolutely civilized, well behaved, good human beings. And let there be no misery anywhere in the world. With this prayer, As I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you, Kasanam Sita. Now I'm open to questions.
Itt az vagyok kérdésekre bármit, amit meg szeretnétek kérdezni. On the morning topic or this topic? A reggeli témával vagy ezzel a témával kapcsolatban. Yeah, of course, this is a very, very difficult thing, but with gradual practice, each achieved, you will start feeling the difference within a few months if you do this exercise every day. Sit down quietly in a place which is absolutely quiet, away from all disturbances. Ülj egy csendes sorokba, csendesen, ami távol mindenféle zavarságoktól. And try to keep your mind on an object which you like the most, as I told you. És tartsd az értelmedet egy olyan tárgyal, amit a legjobban szeretsz. And keep it there, it will go away, bring it back, it will go away, bring it back. Elfogad, talán az ide, hozz vissza, elfogadzik, hozz vissza. And then you can keep your mind on the breath. This, if you do this practice every day for five minutes, you will see the results in the next months. Then you will not be disturbed by the happenings in the world. You will become more stable person in yourself. But you're right, it's a difficult exercise. You have to do it regularly and with perseverance. You see, there are three visible states. Actually, there are four states, but three visible states of the human soul. This is one state when we are sitting now. You call it a state of awakening. It's in Sanskrit called Vesnava state of the body. It's you can feel, you can touch, you can see. The physical world exists, you are physically here, everything you can feel physically. The second state is called Tejas state. That is uh, the dream state of your body. In which all the senses and all your mind faculties, they are working. Minden érzés szervezés értelme minden funkció működik. But not in physical form. De nem fizikai formában. They work like the sun rays, like the film, you know, in in virtual way. Egy ilyen virtuális módon működnek. So all your senses work when you are dreaming. Tehát minden érzés szervezés. Your body works, but not in physical form. Not in physical sense. Then our physical element. Physically, you don't exist there. You exist only in Tejas form. In the Sanskrit word, I don't know how to describe in English. Tejas form of way. You exist like sun rays, you know. Where means what I mean, cool out. Without body. So your mind works there. Your senses work there. Your intellect works there. That is the intellect. That is the intellect. That is the that is the dream state of your body. As 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 the deep sleep state of your body. None of them work. 
None of them work. Only the soul remains, that's it. You Chok, remain pure soul that time. Choko only that model. <coughs> so in the, the deep sleep state, you are conserving all your energy. This world completely disappears to you. In dream state, this world also disappears for you. But you create a world of your own. And you live in that world to the state of dream. That is the power of human soul. So this is how the, the mind works in dream state, but in a different mode. You see, there are two, uh, the creator in Sanskrit is, has been described as Brahma. You can call him by any name, doesn't matter, you can call him Christ, but there is a creator who is called Brahma. Now it has called in two forms it exists. <coughs> Nirgun, that is without any attributes. It has no attributes, you cannot, it has no color, no shape, no size, no nothing. And therefore you cannot understand it. It is beyond perception of your sense organs and intellect and mind. And that is why they have Sakun Brahma. You make an image of the Brahma <laughs> and you concentrate on that thinking that this is Brahma. Since you cannot understand anything which has no attributes, this is easier for you to understand. Since we have a form, we have a shape and size, for us it's easier to understand the shape and size. So initially the purpose of temples was this. But it is no longer the purpose anymore. The purpose is now power structure as I was explaining. It has nothing to do with the uh, the creator and the mysteries of life, it has only to do with the money and power. So, it's easier for, in fact in uh, Bhagavad Gita, I think this is chapter 6th, uh, I think in the beginning, Krishna says, exactly the same thing that for the for the people, us, we have body, form, shape. For us, it's easier to understand the goal in some form. And therefore, people can take it, a, make a form of your own choice, and worship in that sense or think about it in that sense. Like this is space, empty space, it has no attributes. So you can't define it because it's beyond our sense perception. You, in order to define this space, you say between this wall and this wall, whatever it exists. 
So if you take it at treatment less than the whole universe is number. There's nothing but the Brahman, the whole entire universe. You see, this universe is infinite. You agree? This universe is infinite. Infinite, you agree? How can anything infinite have a center time? If you can measure, you can measure this instrument, then you can say this is the center. You can't even measure this, then where is the center? You can't even measure this. This earth is not like even a dot on this, in this universe. You can see billions of stars, trillions of stars in the night. Show me the number of times. I was in Mongolia in the very beautiful night in Mongolia. You can see millions of stars with your naked eyes. So let's forget about this. Every you are you are also the center of the universe. As I was explaining, each one of us is center of this universe. We represent the entire universe. This is the way we are made. We are, we are made, we are... <coughs> Actually, let me also explain to you now, since we have a little time. Why I say that we are center of this universe, and we are, we are representing the universe. It is, it is a purely scientific explanation, let me give you a person scientific explanation. This universe consists, I was talking about five all the time, I'll explain that also too. We have five fingers in our hands. In our feet we have five fingers. We have five senses of perception and five senses of action. There are five pranas in our body. Why? Because this physical universe is made of five elements. They are the space, air, fire, water, and earth. Earth doesn't mean our earth alone, all the solids, all the planets which are in solid form. Air means all variety of air with oxygen or carbon dioxide or whatever. And fire means, the sun is the visible symbol of fire, but fire is far more pervasive than the sun. You can burn this bottle with fire, the bottle becomes what uh, fuel for the fire. You have a piece of wood, you burn it, the wood is the fuel for the fire, isn't it? But wood is not fire, it's burning with fire. Similarly, sun is not fire, it's burning with fire. Sun is like fuel. So there are five elements of this entire universe. Everything which you see, you touch, you see is made of these five things and their combination. There is nothing beyond this in this universe. Our body is made of these five elements. You want to tell me if there is nothing, anything more than these five elements in your body? Can you tell me? If you start from the process, how did you come into existence? 
You came into existence, existence with a drop of a sperm. A drop of a sperm became into a fetus. Hmm? Is that correct? Is that correct? And then how do you keep yourself alive? With the food you eat. The food becomes your body, isn't it? The food you eat, the water you drink becomes your body. The air you breathe. No? Yes. So, where does this thing come from, these five, uh, these things? <coughs> the food comes from, from where? We say it photosynthesis, it grows on the earth. Hmm? It takes water. You go and see a farm, you will see it grows on the earth. It takes water. It takes sunlight. It takes air. And it grows into the space. So it, re it represents these five elements. Nothing more than that. And that is what we are. We are made of these five elements. Our whole body is made of these five elements. And each one of our senses is connected to each of these elements. The sense of hearing is connected to the ether, the space. It represents the entire space. The sounds travel in this space. The sense of touch is connected to the air. It represents the whole air. When the air comes, you feel the touch. The sense of sight is connected to the fire. As soon as the sun goes down, your eyes cannot see. When it is dark, you can't see. Why? It's connected to the fire. Your sense of taste is connected to water. All tastes originate from water. And your taste of smell is connected to the earth. All the smells originate from the earth. So we are made of the five elements and we are directly connected to these five elements. And then we have, as I explained to you, a thing called soul in ourselves, consciousness, which represents universal consciousness. And that is how we represent the entire universe. Each one of you represents the entire universe. So you are the center, forget about everything else. <laughs> Anything else? So thank you very much, Kastan and Sepan. I hope it was useful. Uh, I hope your time was not wasted. És akkor, hogyha most vásároltak a nagykövető könyvéből, amik én megvettem, akkor dedikálj nektek, ha idejöttek. Személyesen, ha van erre igény, és váltottak akár egy pár szót személyesen, és fel a pár percet előtt. Köszönöm szépen!